I have to start out by saying, obviously I'm from Portland, Oregon, so set your clocks back three hours and you'll know how I feel right now. <laughs> and I'm really honored to be here. <clears throat> Thanks, Stacy, for that great introduction. And thank you to the rest of TMC's board of directors, its staff, and everyone behind this great event. I also want to acknowledge Chris Spear and everyone at ATA for the great work that you do on all our collective behalf. You know, it's been 10 years since I was last at TMC, and what I appreciate about this group is the strong sense of camaraderie that makes me feel like I was just here. This is a group of old friends, as much as it is old colleagues, and I'm thrilled to be back. Even more so, I'm excited to be back to share with you some of the developments of my own company, as well as my vision for the future of this industry. As many of you know, late last year, Daimler Trucks separated from the larger Daimler Company into an independent business focused entirely on commercial vehicles. It's been quite a departure from our 125 year history wed to our passenger car siblings, and quite a busy time for all of us as we separate all of our various systems. But one of the more exciting opportunities for us, and for me specifically, was to think about who we really are and what it is we actually do beyond the obvious business of designing, building, selling, and servicing trucks. It was a chance to reflect on our deeper purpose, that of our company and its employees, that of our dealer partners, and most importantly, that of our customers. I was originally told the video you just watched wouldn't be used outside of our company, that it would simply be something we used among our own team. But that video ended up so galvanizing our employees regarding what their contributions mean to our company, that my team convinced me to share it with a far wider audience. Despite us saving some money on the voiceover talent, I have to say that it came out pretty nicely, and that it perfectly represents what I believe it is we do as a company. More importantly, I believe it represents what it is we, all of you in this room included, do as an industry. Without us, without you, the world will be a much different place. I believe this truth was self-evident to anyone in our industry prior to March of 2020, but we can all take pride in the fact that the entire world now recognizes and appreciates the impact we all have. While I think most of the American public has learned far more about domestic and global supply chains than they ever cared to, the silver lining, if we are to find one, is that the customers we serve with trucks, with parts, and with service have taken their rightful place as the heroes of our world. Whether it's a UPS driver bringing packages to our doorsteps, the over-the-road driver getting raw materials to manufacturing plants, or the distribution driver getting food to grocery store shelves, the importance of their work is both more visible and more undeniable than ever before which means we have a solemn responsibility to continue keeping those customers on the road. When you add to that responsibility a number of very large technology changes coming to our industry, it begs the question of how we continue to do this in the long term. The shifting dynamics of global commerce we've observed these past couple of years are not, by our estimation, fads. Instead, we believe we've seen changes in buying habits and dynamics that will last long beyond the recent crisis. It's evident in figures supplied by the Bureau of Transportation Statistics that the value of freight shipments by truck will increase nearly twofold from 2018 to 2045. Additionally, according to e commerce research, final mile delivery is expected to grow by an exceptional 15% in just the next four years. On top of that, consumers expect their purchases to arrive faster than ever before. Evidenced by the fact that two out of every three online buyers say that shipping times influence whether a product is bought and where it's bought from. We're looking at nothing short of fundamental change in the way that people order and receive everything, from furniture, to prescriptions, to groceries. And that level of freight demand is going to create not a more simplistic global logistics landscape, but one that is far more complex 
one that requires resiliency through redundancy. That overwhelming demand is going to have more commercial vehicles on the road than ever before. And it's coming at a time our industry is expected to transform in numerous ways of our own. Greater safety, reduced congestion, and with both regulatory and consumer pressure, a drive toward decarbonization. Any one of these three goals by themselves represent a tremendous rethink of both our equipment design, as well as our manufacturing operations, and your service offerings. Any one of these three goals require technological innovations that by themselves would have historically te taken decades to accomplish. Instead, we're looking at doing all three at once and against an aggressive timeline all while the industry is tasked with keeping an ever-increasing number of trucks on the road. Regardless of whether I'm talking about my company or the industry, we are, by and large, all talking about very common themes, including connectivity, autonomy, and electrification. These are all remarkable technologies. Each one is reminiscent of something from a science fiction movie. Each one has massive implications for our industry. And if I'm being candid, each one has ramifications for our respective businesses, whether manufacturing, service, or operations. As you heard earlier, I'm a numbers guy by both education and background. I tend to shudder at the thought of the capital investment it will take to accomplish the transformation of our industry. More importantly, I've spent 20 years at a company that believes very deeply in delivering purposeful innovation instead of innovation for innovation's sake. I know these technologies need to be practical. None of us wants to see science projects on the road. But after watching development accelerate at an exponential pace in each of these areas in the last few years, and the pull from customers asking for it, I can confidently say that we will deliver on this trifecta of goals. We have to, because as I explained earlier, the freight demand is coming. Added to that, the lack of cars on the road in 2020 also showed us the benefit from reduced emissions, clearer skies, cleaner air, a brighter future for our children and their children. The resurgence of cars on the road and accidents following the shelter in place and stay at home orders has shown we need to move toward greater road safety. The predicate for all of these technologies will be access to data, or connectivity in other words. It's not just big data, but the little data, an idea I credit to my friend and CEO of Platform Science, Jack Kennedy. To Jack's idea, it's not the aggregated data from an entire fleet alone that is making difference. Instead, it's the vehicle-specific understanding we glean from the data coming off each unit which makes the difference to keep customers on the road. I'm sure you've seen this in operation with your own fleets or customer-connected trucks. For those of you familiar with our Freightliner or Western Star trucks, we're now 10 years into offering our own Detroit Connect system. Beyond what it can do for telematics, the Virtual Technician Remote Diagnostic System has evolved to now help fleets and drivers make informed repair decisions within minutes of a fault event. Data is offering insight to improve efficiencies, drive productivity gains, and keep trucks on the road more reliable. Our customers, our industry, is already delivering operational data for the country's fleets like we've never seen before and the data pipeline to the truck only continues to get larger. You're all familiar with the 3G sundown that telecom providers just performed. The jump to 4G is one that doesn't just double or triple connection speeds, it exponentially increases the connection by 14 to 15 times. On top of that, 5G, when it comes, will increase that data pipeline by up to 100 times over 4G. I don't normally speak in hyperbole, but that level of connectivity is nothing short of a game changer. Its proliferation is not unlike that of cell phones and wearable smart devices, 
which were once only reserved for the upper end of the market, but then became ubiquitous. The rapidly increasing growth of this technology means that smart trucks will continue to roll out until the entirety of the nation's fleet is connected. It also means that service operations will be better informed about what truck is coming in for service, why, and what parts are needed when that truck arrives. Connectivity will better help you with responding to the customer's needs, and it will help all of us with getting drivers back out on the road faster. The power of this underlying connectivity enables many other benefits, including advanced safety systems that provide greater on-road safety. What we're offering now with features like Lane Keep Assist, Automated Emergency Braking are defined as SAE Level 2 technology, and are possible based on a considerable amount of foundational work already done. As I said earlier though, that innovation must deliver tangible benefit for our customers. And we know this technology does just that. Last year, Bosch crunched the data on real-world benefits of these systems. They estimate that, when equipped, injuries from large truck crashes are reduced by up to 23% and associated fatalities by up to 19%. I'm convinced improved capabilities for the technology will continue to show an even stronger benefit. Imagine a situation where a driver experiences a medical incident behind the wheel while cruise control is engaged, and the vehicle, after receiving no driver input for a short period of time, disengages adaptive cruise control and begins to slowly bring the truck to a controlled stop. This isn't science fiction. This is technology that's available now for new trucks. To say nothing of what this does for accident mitigation and the driver, you're also looking at a truck that merely needs a driver seated in it instead of major repair or replacement. With these advanced safety features, you can start to see the foundational elements where conditional automation gives way to trucks equipped with SAE Level 4 technology. Level 4 technology, as SAE defines it, is where a high degree of automation under specific circumstances allows a driver to fully relinquish control of the truck rather than being assisted and needing to remain completely engaged as they do with a level two system. Imagine a future where the increased demand for freight movement, compounded by the increasing shortage of drivers, is addressed by a technology that allows them to run longer, farther, and more efficiently than ever before. To get there, we see a long glide path remaining, one whose timeline for us will be dictated exclusively by safety. The reason for this is that designing and releasing a truck that follows the commands of an autonomous system basically requires us to reinvent the truck. I mentioned redundancy in the supply chain being a necessity as we deal with expanded demand for freight, and that dynamic also applies to this technology. That reinvented truck needs redundancy in nearly all systems. For example, in braking and steering. At DTNA, though, we're starting with the chassis which many of you are already familiar with, the Freightliner Cascadia. With one platform and two strong autonomous technology partners in both Waymo and Torque, we're providing our customers the choice of which autonomous driving system works best for their businesses. No different than offering proprietary or third-party powertrain solutions we're able to offer our customers the power of choice of the industry's best autonomous driving solutions based on one truck platform with the lowest total cost of ownership. From a service side, I'm of the belief that a reliable and familiar Cascadia package will help our customers and our dealers address needed service quickly and reliably. This is just one example of our all-inclusive serviceability mindset. Now, switching gears for a moment to technologies a little closer on the horizon, I'd like to talk about the need for ever-increasing freight efficiency. As you know, your fleets or the customers you support at your dealers are all dealing with increasing fuel prices that affects their profitability. On top of this, the fastest way to reduce emissions is to improve freight efficiency and to limit fuel consumption. 
When I look back on how far we've come with our own Freightliner Cascadia, I'm proud to say that we've improved fuel efficiency for that flagship truck by over 35% since its introduction in 2007. We've been able to improve it in large part because of the aerodynamic efficiencies we've applied and the improvements to our Detroit engines. Much of that was done as we reacted to what our customers were asking for. But the astute among you, or those of you who've been around the industry for the past 15 years, will recognize that those improvements also happen to coincide in part with the implementation of more stringent federal emission standards. While I will always rally for the power of innovation over that of regulation, I will also acknowledge that under the DOE's first super truck program, we were able to experiment with technologies we may not have been otherwise able to do. For those of you who recall, our advanced technologies shown in the first generation super truck included numerous aerodynamic enhancements and weight reduction strategies, many of which have now entered into serious production and contribute to an even more efficient truck. We're very much looking forward to introducing our Super Truck 2 later this year, and I encourage you to join the session later this morning on that subject. My own colleague from Daimler Truck, Derek Villanueva, our Advanced Vehicle Systems Manager and Principal Investigator for DTNA's Super Truck 2 program, will be there to provide a high-level overview of some of the new technologies that we have coming. As I described before, I'm not a fan of science projects without purpose, but you may find your shops in the future working on some of the technologies created by Derek and his team. Beyond the improvements to conventionally powered trucks, the changing dynamic in our industry, which seems to be the nearest in reach, is the introduction of electric vehicles. It's also the subject that seems to raise the most questions. I know you're all hearing a lot about this topic. Let me be abundantly clear that while we very much believe in the technology, we're looking not at a light switch moment, but at a very long ramp up period wherein diesel continues to serve the bulk of industry needs. But the day is coming when zero emission propulsion systems will become the dominant technology. For us, the ambition here in the US is to offer exclusively CO2 neutral products by 2039. This is our goal. So we're making pragmatic investments now to build the momentum for the long term. We've deployed over 40 pre-production Class 6-7 EM2s and Class 8 E Cascadias to customer operations in the past two years, mainly in Southern California, but also in other markets across the US and Canada. These are real trucks. They've been performing real work in the real world. They've accumulated more than 1 million miles of collective use, giving us input for the final design of our series produced trucks. They've also provided fleets and drivers the chance to test battery electric trucks integrated into their own businesses. Last year, we opened the order boards for both models, and starting late this year, the e Cascadia enters series production, with the EM2 following shortly thereafter in early 2023. Undoubtedly, California and other select markets will drive early adoption and be responsible for a preponderance of deliveries in the near term. Battery electric trucks will continue to proliferate our industry, and they bring with them plenty of opportunity for both fleets and maintenance operations. But when it comes to zero emission vehicles, we know it's not just one solution to make a full transition, but a combination of them. Just like all of our product and service offerings, we plan to provide choices to our customers. Late this decade, with our self-centric powertrain offering, we will introduce a hydrogen power truck to our portfolio. The technology is well suited to address the longest haul segments, where battery electric trucks will continue to be challenged until battery density increases by orders of magnitude. However, for these technologies, there's more to it for us than just delivering the product and telling our customers to have a nice day. We know we have to holistically support our customers in order to successfully navigate this change. For this reason, we established our own in-house e-consulting team to offer everything from chargers to assistance with much larger infrastructure projects such as distributed energy services, 
things like on-site energy storage and solar arrays. To date, we've assisted more than 40 customers with infrastructure installation through our Freightliner Electric Innovation and CX demonstration fleets. We're prepared to support far more, both Freightliner buyers as well as the buyers of other electric trucks. We're also not limiting ourselves to depot-based projects. Last year, we laid the blueprint for publicly accessible charging, specifically designed with our own e-electric island in Portland, Oregon. It's open to the public and now comfortably accommodates an electric truck with trailer in tow. We proudly opened this charging station in cooperation with our local electric utility, Portland General Electric. To really move the needle on this segment though, we know we need a network of accessible charging stations available for drivers of our trucks or any truck driver, hauling freight from more than point A to point B and back. We're prepared to be part of the solution in this regard. So just recently we announced the signing of a memorandum of understanding with two great partners, NextEra Energy Resources and Black Rock Renewable Power to establish a network of accessible chargers. Collectively, we're committing $650 million to address one of the largest hurdles to a zero emission future, but it's merely a start. We need everyone to come to the table and support the deployment the federal government, state government, utilities, and the service network. Let me explain. I know I laid out quite the roadmap of where we see our future headed. I know that it's a lot of technology to consider coming in to our industry, but how does the service network factor in? As I shared earlier, those of you maintaining trucks on the road are the linchpin of our industry. You move the world supporting your fleets and your customers. And that future, while rife with more new technologies than we have perhaps ever seen before, continues. I implore each of you, each of your shops, to start preparing for these shifts now. This isn't tomorrow. This isn't next week. This won't even be next year. But the shift is coming, and we must embrace it and start to plan for it. When it comes to infrastructure to support electric vehicles, your locations will need charging. For those of you supporting dealerships, you can be part of the charging network solution by providing charging accessibility to electric trucks traveling through your area. But as we've learned from supporting depot charging, and as we know from our experience in building public charging, lead times are not measured in days or weeks, but rather in months and years meaning the time to prepare is now. The horse must arrive before the cart, or truck in this case, and there's nothing but opportunity in this brave new world of technological innovation. Because of that innovation, and not in spite of it, service facilities of the future will expand to address driver and fleet needs as you've been doing for a century. Electric trucks will likely have an advantage in maintenance schedules, but they will also have to be deployed in great numbers. Autonomous capable trucks will run longer, farther, and accumulate more miles in shorter times than the trucks of today, which means more frequent service visits. They'll also need sensor calibrations, inspections, and certifications, all tremendous opportunities for service centers. And we're working to support you in this. We continue to invest in more warehousing, more digitalization, and platform integration, all to provide efficiencies in helping to get the trucks back on the road ASAP. As has been the case of our industry's long history, maintenance operations will continue to be the lifeblood of our nation's logistics network, which is why we continue to invest which is why we ask our partners to continue to invest in our bright future together. At DTNA, I think we build a fairly amazing set of products, and so do many of our established competitors. I believe we all have to do more than deliver a bunch of good products, though. We have to put our customers first, not if they need service, but when they need service. Whether you represent a DTNA franchise or run DTNA trucks or not, 
I think this is something we can all agree makes a difference to your customers, your drivers, and the entire supply chain. As we all navigate the tremendous change to our industry, connectivity, electric, and autonomous technologies, we must make the investment today to enable the smooth introduction of these technologies in the future. For these reasons, we've invested in dedicated personnel to represent the voice of the customer. This is to put the emphasis on the service experience as much as we do on delivering purposeful innovations in our trucks. We're working with our dealer network as our partners to invest in their staff to focus on our mutual customers. And throughout the last two years, we've invested in training CX advocates and continuous improvement coordinators for each dealer group. We continue to work towards supplying parts quickly, timely, and more efficiently. But before anyone throws any tomatoes up here, yes, I know we can be quicker. I know you need more parts. I know you need more trucks. Believe me when I say that keeps me up at night. We all want to break through the current supply chain snarls and ensure the fastest turnaround imaginable for you and your customers. We know we all share a responsibility to keep trucks and their drivers on the road. Now somewhere along the line, and much to my surprise, I managed to accumulate 32 years in this industry, both at DTNA and at one of our highly respected competitors. Like many of you, I've seen some things. I've seen an industry which never cared much about fuel economy embrace it. Safety. Nobody wanted to be unsafe, but it was well down the list of priorities at most places. I've seen Caterpillar exit the engine business despite having amazing brand equity. I've seen automated manual transmissions. Who in their right mind would want one of those in a truck? achieve market domination in the on-highway segment. I've seen this industry, and especially our drivers and technicians, finally starting to be valued and recognized for keeping the world moving. So as an industry, we've grown up quite a bit, adapted, embraced change, professionalized our operations, hired a new breed of more capable people, invested in technology, all of which is exactly what it takes to survive and thrive in today's world. Now we have an even higher and steeper mountain to climb, but we can and will do it together. It won't be easy or inexpensive or without the occasional rough patch, but we will continue moving this industry forward. We have accomplished so much already, but that was in the past and the road is ahead of us not behind us. This industry is not going to slow down, and I, for one, wouldn't want to be part of it if it did. I suspect none of you would want to be part of this industry either, if that were the case. I suspect none of you would be at TNC if that was the case. So thank you for joining me here. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for helping to keep the world moving.